So Donald Trump set the internet ablaze yesterday as he stopped at a Philadelphia area McDonald's and decided that um, he was going to cook some fries and hand some orders out of the drive-thru. So this is from the New York Post, and I got to say... <laughs> People on the right get it. People on the left, not so much. In fact, I'm going to play a clip from MSNBC where Barbara Lee, who's a representative um, out in California, she, she just doesn't get it at all but before i get into that folks just want to say thank you to everybody that the tunes into my channel watches my videos watches my content most of the time it's pop culture entertainment hollywood stuff some sports very rarely do i get into the political things but this one i just couldn't pass up just to so show the absurdity on the left versus the right um, so if you want to support me in the channel, a couple ways you can do it, smash that like button, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, if you like what I'm doing. And if you are subscribed, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Oh, and one last thing before you go, before you leave, make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section. So with that out of the way, here we go, folks. Trump works fry cooker at McDonald's and MAGA faithful line up to order. I'll take whatever he gives me. This is from Carson Swick and Ryan King over at the New York Post. In the race for president, Donald, Donald, Donald Trump is really cooking. Wearing a red tie and an apron, the former president served up some fries and political shade against his rival. That would be Kamala Harris. During a behind-the-counter stint at McDonald's on Sunday, which drew a monster crowd to the Feasterville Travos fast food restaurant. According to some publications, it was probably upwards of 10,000 people standing in line just to see him um, at the McDonald's, which, <laughs> that's a lot of people, folks. McDonald's has long been one of Trump's favorite chains. But his visit to the Golden Arches on Sunday doubled as an effort to reiterate his doubts over Vice President Kamala Harris's claims that she worked there in the 1980s. See, that's one of the things that Kamala Harris boasted. Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris boasted uh, when this campaign started, is that she, she was from a middle-class family, and, and she worked at McDonald's. But nobody can find a record of her working at McDonald's anywhere. So that remains to be seen for the internet loose out there to try to find out. I'll tell you what, it's a great franchise. It's a great company. Look at the crowd over there. Look at how happy everyone is. They're happy because they want hope. The commander in beef told reporters from the drive through window. I've now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala or Kamala. And what his campaign dubbed as the October surprise. McDonald Trump worked the counter and bantered with customers who drove up. His campaign also released footage of him jubilantly preparing happy meals. It was clear they were loving it. We got the salt on it. Never touches the human hand, nice and full, Trump said while filling a container of fries and nod to his germophobic tendencies. Well over a thousand MAGA Donalds faithful lined Street Road in Lower Southampton Township in an effort to meet Trump and say hail to the chef at the McDonald's in critical Bucks County, PA, outside of Philadelphia. I'll just take whatever he gives me, one man told the Post. You know, 
I think what would have been the greatest thing is if he would have fixed the ice cream machine or the shake machine that served shakes. That would have been the piece de resistance. That probably would have won him the election if he, you know, if he was the one to fix the shake machine. <laughs> Love him or hate him, I just feel it's really cool to see this moment in history. Caitlin Hanlon, 33, a hairdresser from Feasterville who was wearing a pink MAGA hat, told the Post. It's a really cool moment, but I obviously support him. Now, that's from the New York Post, which I, I will admit this piece is mostly positive. Now let's flip over to our friends over at MSNBC. The aforementioned Representative Barbara Lee from California. Let's hear what she has to say. We're going to show you what Donald Trump is doing right now. He has gone to a McDonald's. He is... Uh, He's gone to this McDonald's and he's in the Philadelphia area. He's going to work a fryer, apparently, before he goes to the Steelers versus Jets game. Do, can, I mean, if you're on his campaign, and I know you are certainly not, I'm not making any implication of that, but <laughs> what, what is the logic behind this, going to a McDonald's? I mean, we know the guy likes Big Macs and filet of fish and he's used the word love to describe the way he feels about the food there before. But what's this about? Uh, there's no logic to it. It's a stunt. Uh, he has not put forth an economic agenda. Uh, he, as you know, is uh, appears to be not well. Uh, and he's uh, engaged in some really bizarre types of uh, activities during this campaign. It's a stunt. He's not well. He's weird. Um, he's got he's got no he's got nothing he stands for. Um it's it's the same old rhetoric, the same old BS coming from a lefty loon out in California. That's what that is. He's got no economic plan. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So this is just another one of those uh, stunts that he will continue on through the campaign. And I think that we need to really focus on making sure that uh, he is not elected, of course, because he is a threat to our democracy, but also uh, the Harris storm. Oh, there it is. There it is. He's a threat to our democracy. Well, Representative Lee, he may be a threat to your democracy, but he's not a threat to the Republic. Notice what I said there republic we are not a democracy folks we are a constitutional republic we are a representative republic if we were a democracy it would be complete chaos it would be majority rule we'd be ruled by nothing but the big cities like new york chicago la detroit we don't want to be like New York, Chicago, LA, Detroit. We want to be better than New York, Chicago, LA, and Detroit. Loss agenda is about uh, the economy, reducing the cost of living, reducing the cost of prescription drugs, reducing the cost of housing and making life better for everyone. And that's what we have to focus on and make sure we get every voter to the park. Reducing the cost of housing. You know what that $25,000 credit is going to do to housing? first time home buyers or is it 50,000? Yeah, it makes no difference. 25,000, 50,000. What that what that credit is going to do, it's going to raise the cost of housing. It's not going to lower costs. You want to lower costs? I'll tell you how you lower costs. You cut spending. And you cut taxes. You know, there, there's a misnomer out there that I always hear when somebody says, I'm going to cut taxes. The first thing the media asks is, how are you going to pay for it? You don't, you don't pay for tax cuts. Tax cuts increase revenue. Well, you're only going to tax cuts for the billionaires out there. The richest are only going to see a tax cut. We need to increase taxes so they pay their fair share. Folks, do you realize millionaires and billionaires aren't taxed on their income because half of them, they're not making an income per se, like I am, like you out there probably are. They're getting taxed on their capital gains. They're getting taxed on their investments. 
That's how billionaires and millionaires are getting taxed. Just saying. But I digress. Polls and make sure that the voters vote for uh, the free future, not taking the country backwards, as you see that what Donald Trump mm -hmm. continues to try to do. So I'm urging and encouraging everyone to get to the polls and vote for uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. Vote for the future, not vote for the past. Oh, you mean the robust economy while Trump was in office up until that little thing happened in 2020? We shouldn't be voting for a robust economy. It begs the question. It's a real easy question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? I think the majority out there can answer that question honestly and say, no, I'm not. Price of gas is up. Price of groceries is up. Price of electricity is up. Interest rates are up. The price of everything is up. So back to Trump at McDonald's. Uh, the quartering was replying to somebody out there saying, well, this was staged. It, I love Jeremy's response here. No shit. You think Trump just walks into a regular old McDonald's? Of course it was staged. At least he actually worked the fryer. Unlike Kamala. You know, there were two attempts on his life. You know, there are security concerns. Of course, the, of course it's going to be staged. But that doesn't diminish the fact that he was actually serving people through the drive through window. It doesn't diminish the fact he was actually cooking fries and boxing up fries. Learning how to do the job. Megyn Kelly. This is in response to Mediaite, who is no friend to Trump. Mediaite's owned by somebody who's good friends with Ben Shapiro. Little Ben. Who's also a never-Trumper. Everything, everything about Trump has to be negative, evil, weird, disturbing, and so on. The media can't allow for even a moment of levity. That's what this was. This was a moment of levity. This was, this was... Just him going out there to see what it's like working at a McDonald's. Nothing wrong with that. He must be demonized no matter how charming or funny or self-deprecating he ever manages to be. They're sick. And yeah, they are sick. Because this here for Mediaite, Trump serves up McDonald's drive through orders and claims Harris lied about working there in an all-time bizarre photo op. Really? All-time bizarre? That connects with more people. It just doesn't connect with you, Mr. Nieto, over at Mediaite. Uh, Benny Johnson put this out there, and, and th this, is a, this is a good video. I'm going to play this for you here real quick. It's a quick little clip. Got about 10,000 people out there. <laughs> That's a big crowd, huh? Mr. Trump, why did you feel it was important to come here today? Uh, I love McDonald's. I love jobs. I like to see good jobs. And I think it's inappropriate when somebody puts down all over the place that she worked at McDonald's. It was a big part of her resume that she worked at McDonald's, how tough a job it was. Uh, she specifically worked at the French fry, where they make the French fries. And she talked about the heat. It was so tough. She never worked at McDonald's. McDonald's just confirmed that again, by the way. She never worked at McDonald's. So I don't find this bizarre. I don't find this weird. I think it's, I think it's a, 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 an easy way to get some publicity, if you ask me. Um, Donald Trump puts on an apron and works the fried machine at McDonald's in Philadelphia. He now has more experience working at McDonald's than Kamala Harris. Fries are magnificent. We're going to make the best fries. Amazing fries. The best fries anyone has ever seen. Charlie Kirk had put out this little uh, quip over on X, this little post. Two McDonald's customers come up to the drive-up window to see President Trump greet them. 
and then drop this absolutely amazing line. I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again. Thank you. Look at oh, that. Mr. Look at that. Oh, you? Thank you, Mr. President. Nice to see you. Thank you. you made it possible for ordinary people like us to meet uh, you. You're not ordinary. I mean, thank you so you much. You are not ordinary. ordinary. I can see. We pray for you. Uh, and, you. and you are the type of person we want to be the president. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So nice. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, I took a bullet. That's right. Thank you, Mr. President. When you think about it, I guess that's right. Thank you. Thank you very so much. So there you go. That was yesterday. Trump and McDonald's practically breaking the internet. And not only breaking the internet, but I think he might have broken Barbara Lee <laughs> over at MSNBC. So what do you guys think? Comment down below before you leave. While you're at it, please take the time, if you would, to smash that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. With that, I will see you guys.